There are a lot of guys out there who think it's overpriced, it's ripping people off because, you know, it's just plastic. Initiating. Welcome back to my daily grind, create yourself. That's what it's all about. One day, one step in the right direction. I'm Chris and I'm only here to show you if I can do it then and you can do it as well. It is Sunday, I'm still working on the compensation spinner. I'm getting there. And in this vlog, I'm going to answer a question that needs to be answered, I think, because as I'm getting more exposure, this question just keeps popping up and it's totally understandable. So let's talk about the costs of 3D printing. There are a lot of guys out there who think it's overpriced, it's ripping people off because, you know, it's just plastic. And of course it is plastic, but it's another technology. So let me try to explain. So what the most guys are used to are are injection mold parts and of course they are so freaking cheap because plastic as it is is isn't that expensive right and if you happen to own an injection mold machine then you can produce them like a thousand pieces a day it's super fast you can produce a lot and that means it's just cheap it's super cheap talking about china stuff right they produce just so much that it is so freaking cheap but that's Obviously not the case with 3D printing. Granted, injection mold machines are expensive. They are way more expensive than a little printer, but you know, they produce way freaking more parts, okay? So that's what you're used to. You're used to cheap plastic parts, right? So let's move on to 3D printing and I did a little document summing up all the costs and stuff, so let's get into that. Explaining 3D printing costs. First of all, you need to buy a printer and this is all in reference to my new printer. I paid 2.2K. The expected lifetime is around 1000 to 3000 hours. On my MakerBot Replicator 2, I only got 750 hours. But you know, let's be optimistic. So for 1000 hours in lifetime, one hour would equal to 2.2 bucks. 3000 hours lifetime would equal to 0.73 bucks. Next point, repair work. Let's assume there is none. Of course there is repair, but let's just, you know, maybe it will get 1000 hours without repair. Next up is material or filament cost. The cheapest PLA from Amazon you can get is around 20 bucks per kilogram. This equals to two cents for one gram. And there is the Ultimaker PLA, one kilogram for around 40 bucks, which equals to four cents per gram. And as you can see, I'm getting deeper into my own situation, explaining my pricing. You know, I do hand spinners and for that I need bearings and weights. Cheap bearings from Amazon are around four bucks per bearing and cheap bearings from China retail are around two bucks per bearing. Medium and steel balls are around three cents per ball and the big balls are around 20 cents per ball. Next up is electricity, so one cent per hour. Let's just neglect this as well. Next up software, let's assume it's free, <laughs> totally. Next up is failure rate. Let's assume every 10th print fails. On my last printer, it was around every eighth print, maybe even every fifth print as it got closer to, you know, failing every time. So we have to add 10% of the cost. So let's get to a spinner. This right there is a Triforce 2. It uses up 20 grams, you know, for the spinner and for the raft, for everything basically. It takes two hours to print. I need one bearing, three big balls, three medium balls. By the way, this is a rather small spinner. That's literally not much material right there. A is the optimal assumption and B is, you know, the more realistic assumption. That's the material price right there. There's a print time right there. I just noticed I made a mistake, but the overall calculation is right, actually. Bearings right there, medium balls and big balls. Optimal assumption equals to 5.55 and realistic assumption equals to almost 10 bucks times 1.1 for failure rate equals to around six bucks or around 10 bucks, so let's say around 10 bucks. Spinner cost alone. Next up, carambit costs. For example, the slasher carambit, this one right there. This one takes 30 grams of material, takes four hours to print and needs nine big balls. So again, optimal assumption and realistic assumption right there. Material cost, print time, big balls, and that's including the failure rate, so it's between seven bucks and 14 bucks. Next up is shipping. I need envelopes, I need business cards, stickers, tape, other stuff, and which equals to 70 cents per package. So everyone who buys stuff, you know, I include two business cards, a personal note, I include a few Snapchat stickers and merch, and I also forgot, you know, the paperwork. So it's more like one buck per shipping. And now we're getting to the interesting part because this is handmade. Most of the guys out there just 
don't understand it. I make this stuff with my own hands. It's not made in China, it's made at home by me. I print two shells, which I need to sand and then clean. I need to mix and apply glue. Well, and first of all, clear the bearings from the grease, then put everything together and clamp it up, which takes me around 30 minutes per piece. And when that's done, I need to pack it all up and transport it to the post office, which takes me another good 30 minutes right there. So let's get to the last point, to my hourly rate, to my wage, basically. Triforce 2, selling for 25 bucks. I have to pay 20% tax and an Etsy fee. This equals to around 20 bucks minus the material cost equals 10 bucks per hour. Slasher, for example, selling price 30 bucks minus tax and Etsy fee is around 24 bucks minus material cost. And that equals to around 14 bucks per hour, mainly because there is no bearing. And that's the reality behind that. I'm not working for free, but I'm also not decently paid. I wish for 100 bucks an hour, but you know what? That's not even what I get out of it because I invest everything back into a new printer, for example, or better YouTube equipment. So in the end, I'm basically working for free because I'm reinvesting everything into building up. So to everyone out there who thinks, you know, I'm ripping guys off with my stuff, now you know, I'm not forcing anyone. I just try my best to develop epic looking designs and just amazing spinners. I try to add a personal note, you know, just put a lot of love into them and it works. I already sold 100 items on Etsy. I bought a second printer, you know, just in time as my other one died basically. And all in all, it's just, you know, it's just an example that if you work hard, put love into something and just try to make it good, you know, just try to create something valuable that it just works, you know, there is always a need for quality stuff out there. Even if it's just a toy like hand spinners. And that's what it's all about. I got a comment he wrote, create yourself one step one day at a time. Well, he already messed that up. <laughs> How we do that is by making you guys buy my stuff, which is first of all true. If you buy my stuff, you will support me and it will enable me to create myself, move forward. But what stops you to do the same thing. And that's just what it's all about. I'm just moving forward. I'm just doing stuff, creating stuff and try just to be a good example for you guys. Just to show you that it is freaking possible to do stuff, to change your life and the world. <laughs> that it is possible to change your life at your own will. And now you know, that's it for today. I will see you tomorrow. Come on.